Relax, it's the only pink shirt that I have. It goes with the theme. Relax. We are gonna do a whole bunch of predictions. I'm gonna start with the top six. I'm gonna give you my predictions for the manager of the season, the Golden Glove winner, the top goal scorer, the young player of the season, the player of the season. And to cap it all off, I'm gonna give you my predicted team of the season at the end of 2025. Let's begin. And in sixth place, because I am going in reverse order, I am going with Manchester United. Yes, the COVID allowance abusing red cartel of the Premier League is going to be going in sixth place. <laughs> Look, without any bias, putting that all aside, I think Eric Tanag is going to have a pretty decent year. I think they're going to push for top four. They are in the Europa League, which means they don't have to put out a lot of first team players, especially from now until January. Giving him more time is not only a good thing for Manchester United, but a good thing in general. I am so sick and tired of managers getting sacked for not producing instant results. It's one of the worst gimmicks in football. I might be in the minority here, but I think signing Matias De Ligt and Mazraoui are very good signings for Manchester United. I think that they replaced wan pretty well. Uh, Mazraoui is not as good as wan defensively, but attacking-wise, he is much better. And actually, I think Matias De Ligt will have a very, very good season with Manchester United. There are bad spells. I just think Matias De Ligt is in a bad spell. It is all in his head. The talent is there with Matias De Ligt. I think he will bounce back. I expect a monster season from Bruno Fernandes. Since he's come into the league, he's probably been the best attacking midfielder in the Premier League besides Kevin De Bruyne. He's got more weapons. He's got better weapons. I expect Bruno Fernandes to slightly elevate his goal involvements from last season. Yes, and sixth place is Manchester United. Let's move on to fifth. In fifth place, ladies and gentlemen, I am going with Tottenham Hotspur. I don't know about any of you, but I think Dominic Solanke is a sensational signing for Tottenham Hotspur for two main reasons. One is obviously goals. 19 goals scored in the Premier League last season. Do I think he can continue that form? I don't know if he can get because 19 goals, 19, 20 goals in the Premier League means that you are a top quality striker. I don't know if I expect 19 goals, but I do expect maybe like 13, 14 ish goals. And I think that should definitely put Tottenham in a much better position than last season. The second reason is Son Heung Min. With Dominic Solanke coming back in, Heung Min's son no longer has to play as a striker. He can drift out wide, which means Postacoglu will be putting Son in his best position. With Solanke up top with James Madison and Kulisevsky, Tottenham Hotspur's attack looks absolutely devastating. My predictions basically are in the presumption that everybody stays fit. So that includes James Madison, nine assists last season. I think he played 27, 28 games. He definitely needs to be playing at least 35 games. A solid midfield with James Madison, with Basuma, with Ben Tancor, and obviously with the new signing of Archie Gray, who is a top level talent, by the way. I think Tottenham Hotspur are gonna get fifth. In fourth place, I am going with Newcastle. I have seen a good amount of predictions, actually a lot over the last couple of weeks, especially in the last two days. There are very few people who have Newcastle finishing in the top six. People, for some reason, have forgotten what they did last season. Not this past season, the season before, without European football as a quote-unquote distraction. They were formidable. They really were. The bottom line is, is that the uh, quote-unquote distraction of European football is going to take a lot of the strain off of the squad. I will admit this prediction is slightly under the assumption that they get Mark Gahey. I think as of this recording, they've just placed their third bid to Crystal Palace. Of course, we can't talk about Newcastle without mentioning their best player, in my opinion, which is Alexander Izak. In my opinion, the second best striker in the league with Erling Haaland. And at times, he even outshined Erling Haaland last season, especially in the opening four or five months of the season. He is outstanding. He has everything that you want in a striker. He will get you 20 goals, and that is why I think Newcastle will finish in the top four. In third place, I am going with Liverpool. I have seen a lot of predictions over the last couple of days. A lot of people are putting Liverpool outside the top five, not even fourth or fifth. They're putting Liverpool outside the top five, and I just don't see it. They brought in Arnie Slot not to replace Jurgen Klopp in, in his entirety, but to continue his work. 
Preseason is obviously not the main indicator of a team's success in the future, but Liverpool were playing such beautiful football in preseason. The only thing that you could say with Liverpool is that their uh, lack of transfers might bite them in the butt. Zubamendi, as of this recording, has just rejected Liverpool for obvious reasons. Zuby Zuby do, where are you? We got some work to do now. If I heard that right before I was about to join Liverpool, I'd have to throw myself in front of a train. Experience matters in the Premier League, ladies and gentlemen, and I don't know why people are sleeping on a team with Allison, Trent Alexander-Arnold, Virgil van Dijk, and Mohamed Salah. I... I don't get it. I think Liverpool fans had a huge revelation with Cody Gakpo during the Euros. Maybe we shouldn't play him in the middle, we should play him out wide because he is absolutely stunning out wide. I'm expecting a big season out of Darwin Noodles. I'm expecting a big season out of uh, Trent Alexander-Arnold. I think McAllister is only gonna get better. I think Do Dominic Zlobosli, if he can stay fit, is gonna help Liverpool tremendously, especially in, in the uh, the back half of the season. I think Harvey Elliott is gonna be in contention for Young Player of the Year. Yeah, Liverpool are third. Now we're gonna get into the juicy parts in second. <laughs> In second place, I have Manchester City. <laughs> I know, I know, I know, I get it, I get it. There are a few reasons why. I don't think this is as big of a uh, choice and uh, th this is as, you know, horrific of a choice as people think. 2023, the point gap between Arsenal and Manchester City was five points. Last season was two points. All I'm gonna say is that Manchester City's last run of games, I don't know if any of you have saw this, is pretty interesting. Besides the Manchester Derby, which is at Old Trafford, I believe, and Aston Villa, which is at home, our last 11 games of the season are very favorable. If before that, that, uh, that run of 11 games starts, if Manchester City are within six or seven points off of first place, I think they're gonna win the league for a fifth time in a row. We lost Julian Alvarez. Kevin De Bruyne, Kyle Walker, Bernardo Silva, Kovacic, and John Stones have slightly regressed in their abilities, in my opinion. Okay, and that's just because of time, okay? Their decision-making is gonna get better. You know, football players get better in decision-making as they grow older, they get smarter. But their ability on the on the field with their physicality is gonna, is gonna regress a little bit, obviously, and that's just because of time. And I think we're relying too much on our young talent. Obviously with Rico Lewis, we've seen him in the Premier League, he's done well. It's an easier discussion with him. For Oscar Bob, I think it's, it's a little bit easier. With O'Reilly and James McAtee, I'm not 100% convinced. The thing is, ladies and gentlemen, is that our players are going to have to deal with a 60-70 game schedule this season. Because regardless of what happens this season, Manchester City will be in a title race. And that is going to be put in the minds of these young players. It's very different playing AC Milan in New York. It's playing Crystal Palace at Selhurst Park. It's not a question of, am I right or wrong? Am I going to be proven right or wrong? I just don't know yet. There's a good amount of uncertainty with the Manchester City squad. It's not as uh, it's not as deep as other people think it is. It really isn't. So yeah, I think this might just be the year we fall short. And that obviously means the champions this season will be Chelsea. <laughs> Surely they're not going to be doing a second place three-peat. Surely that is not going to be not going to be their legacy. In the last two seasons, Arsenal's record out of uh, 38 plus 30, 76 games, is 54 wins, 11 draws, and 11 losses. 54 out of 76 games means they have a 71% win rate. I think Martin Odegaard and Bukayo Saka are going to be in the top five players list by the end of the season. And I didn't even mention their defense. Defense wins you titles, ladies and gentlemen. They have the best defense in the Premier League. By far, it's not even close. This is a mentality issue. This is not a quality issue. Martin Odegaard, Bukayo Saka, Declan Rice, William Saliba, those are the types of players that can win you the league title. Two point difference just from last season. Just a two point difference. If they did, if they decided to actually play at the Etihad, instead of hiding like cowards, Arsenal could have been champions last season. I expect Arsenal to come in aggressive, wanting three points, 
not playing for a draw, wanting three points. If you want to win the league, you're going to have to take points off of Manchester City. That is why Arsenal will be champions in 2025. So that is top six. We are going to be moving on to the more individualistic awards. We're going to be starting off with best manager. Obviously, I'm going to be consistent with my predictions. If Arsenal wins the Premier League, the best manager will be Mikel Arteta. Next, we have top goal scorer. I think if Erling Haaland can score 10 goals in his opening seven or eight games, I think he might break 30 goals. Such a great prediction, I know, so boring, I understand. I think Alexander Izak is gonna be second with 22, 23 goals. And I think Darwin Nunez is gonna be third with 17, uh, I'm gonna say 19 or 20 goals for Darwin Nunez uh, for this upcoming season. Up a sister, in my opinion, I think is going to be Martin Odegaard. I think 14 assists will do the trick. I think he had 11 last season, 11 or 10. 14 assists, I think will do the trick and he will get top a sister. Second place, obviously this is presuming he is going to be fit for the majority of the season. It's going to be James Madison. He only got nine assists last season. But again, he only played like 27 games. He's, he can play 11 more games, and I think he can break around 12 or 13 assists and get him second place. Third, in my opinion, is going to be Cole Palmer. I think he's gonna get, an, he's gonna have another brilliant season for Chelsea. 10 or 11 assists for him, I think he's gonna get third. Golden Glove is gonna be David Raya, not even close. Player of the season. For player of the season, my shortlist, or the, uh, three, the three players in the running, since I have Arsenal winning the league, I'm gonna have Rodri in the running. I'm gonna have Bukayo Saka in the running. And I'm gonna have William Saliba in the running. And to be honest with you, I am actually gonna go for William Saliba to be Premier League player of the season. Next, we have young player of the season. My three uh, players for the, uh, the short list of young player of the season, no particular order. I have Oscar Bob, I have Kobe, uh, Maynou, and I have Harvey Elliott. And just as soon as I say those three, I just forgot about Alejandro Garnacho. Wow. You know what? I'm just going to go with it. I think Kobe Maynou is going to be young player of the season. And finally, my team of the season. Let's do my predicted team of the season for 2024-2025. 4-3-3. In goal, I'm going with David Raya, Golden Glove winner, in my opinion. I think he's going to get at least 15 clean sheets. I think that should wrap up the Golden Glove, a second consecutive Golden Glove award for David Raya. Left back, Udogi. Two center halves. I'm going with William Saliba. I'm going to be slightly boring. Saliba and Gabriel is going to be my center half partnership. Right back, I think it's going to be Trent Alexander-Arnold. My three in midfield is going to be Rodri, James Madison, and Martin Odegaard. My front three... Alexander Izak, Erling Holland, and Bukayo Saka. Ladies and gentlemen, that pretty much wraps up Premier League predictions 2024-2025. Hope you all enjoyed the video. Let me know your predictions down below. I really want to hear what you all think of uh, the upcoming season. What are your thoughts? Give me your predictions for top score, the manager of the season, your top six. I've definitely slept on Aston Villa and Chelsea. Thank you all so much for watching. I will see you all next time.